Hey, Dave, I have a confession to make. What's that, man? I'm a huge failure. <laughs> <laughs> I feel, I've failed way, way more times than I've succeeded in uh, my small business career. Oh, uh, oh, yeah. I, yeah. you know, yeah. I, I, as we were preparing for this episode, I, I had a refrain in my head and, and it was, I'm a loser, <laughs> right? You know, like the, because yeah. that's, yeah. yeah. That, and, yeah, and we talk about it, positivity and the whole framework stuff on the show all the time. And I, and I think it's always good to dip back in and talk about failure. You know, I've lost millions of dollars. Uh, I've walked away from a company that I founded uh, for just for a buck. Yeah, uh, I've in invested in countless businesses and projects that have never created a dime of revenue. But there's a flip side to that. And I'd love to... Uh, dig deep into that today on the small business. Well, yeah, let's talk about it. Yeah. Cause there's, there's a lot of different types of failure and, and they can, they, they can very much lead to, uh, to good things. So they can, uh, and are you ready to small business, man? I am absolutely ready to small business. He's Shannon Jean. I'm Dave Hamilton. And this is small business show 291 for Wednesday, September 2nd, uh, Thursday, September 3rd. See, I failed already. Uh, Shannon 2020. Yep. Yes, indeed. And uh, and Shannon, you are right that this is show number 290. No, I think this is, is that right? Is it, I, I, it's not 291? Am I get, am I failing at that too? I think it's 292. So we already did 291, is that right? Let's see. Yeah, we already yeah, did 291. 291 was with Victoria last week. It sure was. Oh, <laughs> uh, see, right. man, we're just we failing so left many, and right. They're, they're, they're stacking up, but that's okay. But that's, but that's kind of the point is that these, uh, for me anyway, my my life often looks like a series of of failures that just sort of cascade on one another until there's success at the end of the road. Yeah, that's right. And and I think that uh, talking about it and going through it hopefully will help others out there that are at different stages. And maybe you're in the you know the the, the bowels of a of a terrible failure right now, but know that you're going to get out the other side and you'll be able to look back on it. You know, don't, for me, don't talk about bowels. I had surgery yesterday, yeah. Shannon. That's yeah, okay. that's right. That's yeah. right. Yeah. That's why that's it's crazy. not Wednesday, September second. It's Thursday, yes, September third. That's correct. That's right. yeah, yeah, we had a little, uh, little, uh, little hiccup there. Flip there, but yeah. you're back and you're safe and you're. Good. I am. Did you yeah. do the? I, 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 did you do the belly button upgrade? They give you a little jewelry. You know, I I asked, but it turns out no. Um, ah, yeah, see. yeah. But you know, I gave them one instruction. I I, I said to the anest anesthesiologist before you know things started i said look you have there you have many jobs here but one is the most important job you have she said what's that and i said to wake me up at the end and so she succeeded see like i don't know if there was a series of failures in there all i know is she woke me up at the end and that's the that was how i judged success so there you go that's pretty good. Yeah, that's, that's good. Yeah. So you know, and and that that's important too is looking f for every every success. You know, the the key for me is I failed so many times. Some of them huge. Some most of them smaller. Thankfully, yeah. but uh, I've never let one of those failures stop me from eventually moving on, developing that revenue stack that would help build wealth over time, and you know. There, there's a saying, you know, I, I never fail, either win or learn. And it's been attributed to a few different people, but so we'll just let it hang out there. I don't know who actually yeah. said it. Yeah, yeah. Um, but my the, the uh, premise here for today's show is much of how failure impacts your life is how you frame it, how you look at it, the way you spin the story. And we talk about that on the show all the time, that as small business owners and entrepreneurs, we have the luxury of of creating our own story, right? Yes. And I think so many people miss that opportunity is, you know, you get to frame it, you get to create the, how things work, you know, and uh, you get to come up with the story, how you share it, what you talk about to not only to other people, but to yourself, which may be more important. Well, right? I think that's the most important. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you got to believe it before you can, you know, sell it to others. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So for me, uh, I always, I'm, it's all about persuasion and I'm trying to persuade myself that that failure, uh, helped me to learn something valuable and you may have to write it down, you know, whatever else you're going to pull, 
pull out of it. Uh, and then you can build on what you learn from that failure. And, and uh, sometimes you need to really distance yourself before you can look for that tidbit of information because you may be, uh, there may be anger, there may be disappointment, uh, self-loathing, you know, if, if you failed and, and you're just tearing yourself up on it. But you got to keep working at it each day and uh, look at, you know, what positive things have come out of those, uh, of those failures. It's very, very important, I think as you think and how you think about it. Yeah. Yeah. You have to be able to look, I mean, most, you know, there's, there's the other phrase that, that is, you know, most overnight successes take 20 years, right. Or happen over yeah. the course of 20 years, but you know, those 20 years are not usually all roses. Right. And, and right. so you have to look at every success that you have. This is part of how I hack my own brain or persuade myself, you know, two terms meaning the same thing. Uh, is I, whenever I have a success, I do take a minute and look at, I, I, I post mortem it, right. You know, like, okay, yeah, what did great. it take to get here? It's like, look, I failed at this. I failed at that. And I'm, I'm almost looking for the failures because I want to associate the failures with a positive feeling. And so it's yep. like, right. Okay. I did that. So the next time it's like, all right, we failed. Great. What did we learn? Let's, you know, let's, let's try again, or let's move that forward. And I, I, a word that I've, I've, um, found myself trying to use more and more. And I, I think it's starting to get into my, you know, internal vernacular is I don't try to say, let's get past this. Let's, you know, forget about this. I it's let's get through this because that way you're, you're, you're embracing the reality of, okay, this is a failure. And of course the, the year 2020 and especially, you know, the whole COVID thing is a right. great opportunity to say, let's get through this. We're not going to go back. Um, we're not going to forget about it, but we have to find a way through it that, that does allow us all to succeed and, and do things. And that's happening, you know, in, in varying degrees, depending on your industry and all that stuff, of course, but we are getting through it. And, and it's not ignoring what's what the realities of what's going on, but it's it's accepting them and then figuring out, OK, well, how do I carve a path that that sidesteps those things and gets through the problem? But you can do that in your own business. Like there's you know, there's a million different levels that you can do that. at. But I, I, I like that phrase for myself, like, get, let's get through this. Um, yeah, it makes sense. And in what, you know, Apple, when they were in real trouble and the markets crashed and everything, they said that they were going to innovate their way through that problem. And I found that very, at the time, it was like, oh, what a really smart thing to say. I mean, I know they're speaking to investors and potential customers. I mean, it, you know, any Apple press event is, is very carefully crafted. But it was Steve Jobs that said it. Like, we're going to innovate, innovate our way through this downturn or whatever it was. And I was like, look at that. And then, of course, they, they stood up to that. They proved it. Yeah. Um, but no, makes but yeah, sense. I like, I just like the terminology. So I've been trying to make it my default language when well, I'm getting there. Yeah. That's yeah. great. Yeah. Yeah. And, and a lot of that, uh, how you, how you frame it and the speaking to others, you know, when you discuss this failure with your employees, your spouse, whoever, uh, you know, you want to have that, that framing set up to where it serves your story. Even when you're telling yourself, you know, who do you want to be? Do you want to be the flaky person that jumps from one scheme to the next or the focused, you know, independent thinker, it's working hard to find success. That's, oh, I just haven't found it yet, but I learned this. I'm, I'm taking my takeaway as this, uh, you know, remember you get to choose that, that, that right. is the power of being independent, being an entrepreneur is you get to set that framework. And eat, both of those things describe exactly the same person and the same steps they're taking. You can just choose to look at it two different ways. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's really good. And, and you know, it's easier to do it once you've had six, some success, obviously. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the more success you have, you're going to find it's, it is easier to talk about failure. There's no doubt about it. Um, you can't I guess start that's out, true. I, I still have trouble yeah. with it. But I, anyway, well, yeah. I have trouble with it, but I like I, I, I 
can't think of myself in a, in a negative way. I just, I just have a right. totally different outlook. I, I know and, you, you, you told know. me when you, when you go like to a Beck or when we could go to concerts, yeah. when you'd go to a Beck concert, you wouldn't sing along with the, I'm a loser, that loser song because it's yeah. just not me. It's not true. And right. I change the words. I just make it you. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's fascinating. <laughs> not, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah and, and so there I was singing the exact same words, but from the Beatles, uh, at the beginning yeah. of the episode. That's right. Yep. Yeah. Cause I, I'm just such a firm believer in that. Uh, you know, we're programming ourselves every single day. Mm -hmm. um, I was working with a, a woman in this face group, a Facebook group that I that I manage about uh, you know selling online and things, and she's you know creating marketing material and all this kind of really great stuff. And I and I said, hey, not only is this good for your customers, it's good for yourself because you see this now. You know, you're looking at these branded uh, materials, bags and shipping materials, all this kind of stuff. And I go, that really helps your framing of, hey, I'm a legitimate business. You know, I'm, I'm moving forward. So how you think and how you, the things you look at, the things you listen to has a dramatic impact on on your outlook and, and how you frame that stuff. And that's what has worked for me and allowed me to get through so much failure in my life and convince people all around me that we're going to get through it. Yeah, uh, for sure. So I have a, a tip that I came up with uh, very recently, in fact. I mean, I, I think at times I've employed it over the years, but I came up with it recently that I want to share. However, the the next thing that I want to share is our two sponsors, if that works for you, Mr. Gene. That works for me, man. Yeah. All right. Our first sponsor today is at meetotis.com slash SBS. You know, mastering digital marketing can be a mess. In fact, it's something that I've failed at many, many times over and over again to stick with the theme of the episode here. But it's true. Like, this is something that is really hard to master. And and the thing is, you, you know, all the big companies have like, you know, teams of people or they're using AI or things like that to get it done. And this is where Otis comes in because with Otis at meetotis.com slash SBS, there's no need to learn multiple complicated ad platforms. You can easily create ad campaigns for Facebook, Instagram, and Google in just minutes right from the Otis app. And the app shares helpful tips so you can create ads that people want to click and buy without having to hire an agency. And then Otis analyzes your existing customers using data from your point of sale solution and then uses their AI, their artificial intelligence, to find those customers and then others like them and then shows them your ads online. So you can put your social ads on autopilot, manage from your phone, and autopilot balances your chosen daily budget across the various social platforms. And you can get results for just $10 a day. It's a super headache saver. You pay Otis Weekly. They pay the socials. It's awesome. And... We want you to get started with Otis today using our special offer. It's a 14-day free trial plus a $25 ad credit. So you truly get to use it for free. But you only get that when you go to meetotis.com slash SBS. Like I've said, meetotis.com slash SBS. Our thanks to Otis for sponsoring this episode. Our next sponsor is Linode at linode.com slash SBS. If you're running anything in your business, chances are you're going to need a server, right? You run your point of sale system, you need a server. You run a VPN, you need a server. You run, you know, you want to run Minecraft at home, you need a server. Here's the thing, you want to leave running the server up to the server geeks. And that's where Linode comes in even better when you go to our link, Linode, L-I-N-O-D-E dot com slash S-B-S, you get a $20 credit to get started. The cool part is their least expensive server is just five bucks. So you really can get started with just that $20. We'd like to help you out. This is how things work here at the Small Business Show. We'd like to help you get started. And when you're getting started, you can, if you're a geek and you like the terminal and all that stuff in the command line, feel free to use it. No problem whatsoever. However... If you're not a geek, or even if you are and you don't want to have to mess with that, no problem. Linode's cloud manager lets you set up a server. You pick what kind of server, all of that stuff right from the web. You answer some questions. You say, I want to set up a WordPress server. Great. What do you want? You know, what's the host name? What, uh, what's your username and password? Like things like that. And then, okay, then it builds it for you. All set. You don't have to know how that happens. They've already taken care of it. 
at linode.com slash SBS. This is how it works. So go check it out. Get your $20 credit at linode.com slash SBS. And our thanks to Linode for sponsoring this episode. All right, Shannon. So my, my trick that I've, I've, I have to force myself to do because I don't okay. like seeing myself as a failure, but right. I have to do this because as soon as I do it, you know, if I, I have some, it can be a big failure, a little failure, you know, it might be something like, well, one of our sites, uh, you know, one of our publishers has decided to not work with us anymore. It happens, you know, they, their business changes or maybe they, sure. you know, they, they, they think they can do it better than on their own or they, they think they can do better with someone else, you know, whatever we have failed them. That's fine. I mean, it's not fine, but it happens. There's, you know, it's not a perfect fit with everybody, but I hate it when somebody tells us, you know, that we're going to, we're going to walk away. Cause it's like, Oh, failure. And my, but that's just one of the things. It's any of those kinds of things, those little, like it didn't get the sale or, you know, any of that. I, it is my tendency to be like, all right, bury it and move on, you know, and then look back later at what that failure taught me, but don't look at it right now. The problem is if I do that, I, I get stuck in it. It's, it's, it's always there. I have to process through it. And so what I find is I go, when I get bad news, I tell someone about it immediately and immediately that sets me free because now while I'm talking with them, I'm talking about, I'm convincing them and me about, okay, here's how we move through this as opposed to just letting it be this thing that I'm going to ignore while I focus on some other success metric. So when you get bad news, tell somebody about it. And it, it really is not my default i will very counterintuitive yes but i'm finding it super it frees me it allows me to move forward it which is weird but it 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 works yeah Yeah. you know i heard i heard a term uh i was driving home from the mountains yesterday and i heard a term that uh i want to explore more on the upcoming show is a cult of positivity Mm. and how it can impact you in a negative way uh and uh, related to business and i and i would think that that uh, thinking about it i've definitely <laughs> have this issue and uh your technique is it an interesting uh flip side to that being able to get that negativity out there to help you uh help you get through it well it's no longer it, it like when i'm at the end of that process it's no longer a bad thing it's a, a thing that i've now learned at least one thing from because yeah, processing sure. it there's always something that comes out of it you know uh, well, yeah. we didn't get that sale. Well, why? You know, oh, well, yes, we couldn't provide feature X to the customer. Okay, but fair. Like now we get to decide, is that important to us? Because do we want to go through whatever we need to go through to be able to offer feature X? And now we can, maybe we don't get to go back and get that customer, but the next one we don't lose because we have it, you know, or whatever it is, or we can decide, no, you know, it's totally not worth our time. All right, great. Well, we've just proven to ourselves that, it, you know, we've had a real world example and we are okay not having feature X and losing that type of sale. Great. Moving on. No problem. You know, we can revisit that down the road if we want. So, yeah, I don't know. It's smart. It's just, yeah. You know, I, I like it. Yeah. Well, one of the ways that I, you know, have come to deal with that failure is using humor, right? And to help me get through it. I, I, I think you gain uh, more fans, more mm. respect. Uh, when you tell like self-effacing stories about your failures, because oh, most yeah. people, um, you know, they know about your success one way or another. Hopefully, sure. you know, e- they see it around you, right? Uh, right. The way you carry yourself, maybe where you live, your building, you, you know, where your business is. Um, and, and as a business owners, we're constantly pushing this marketing story, you know, this, how we're great at that, which is, which is important. Um, but when you share your failures, it, I think it really endears people to you and it shows them that, you know, you're, you're just human. Right. Um, and so again, it comes with having some success. You can't start out this way, but one of the things that has helped me connect with people is like, I, I talked about on the show before, I think we even did a whole show about it. Sure. is the failure resume. And I, I read about this uh, a while back and I thought, gosh, that's a great idea. And so, uh, you know, we'll put a link in the show notes of I keep an updated failure resume up on my blog and anybody can see it. And I've had lots of people co- uh, comment about it that, oh, that's that's really different. Because I talk about my successes all the time. 
And, but to have those listed out there. And of course, I put a positive spin on just about every one. I learned this and I met this person and this, I created this partnership with that because it failed. And, you know, um, but it, it's something that, that you might want to look at. And, uh, I, you know, it works. It, it allows you yeah. to connect with people on, on another level. No, it, 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 yeah, that, that does make sense that it, yeah, you got to give people something to connect to. Like you were saying last week when, you know, the, the, that speaker took the stage and said, uh, I'm going to tell you a story about, you know, my, my yeah. failure that I've never shared before or something like yeah, that. Yeah. So, that was really powerful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Especially when it said, please don't tell anybody. Don't right, put it on the internet. <laughs> yeah. Don't put it on the <laughs> like, internet. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's yeah. really good. It's, but on the flip side, you know, I think having a strong, we we've talked about it here on the show, the a success list, right? right. Even small little successes that you can uh, look at and, you know, because people often overlook their own successes. You know, you, you need to build yourself up because that's going to allow you to get through this fa these failures uh, quicker, um, and and to be able to kind of tease out the important parts of that failure. And that success list, small ones, large ones, uh, it's going to help you overcome the inevitable failures. And uh, you know, we'll put a link up there on the show. We've got excuse me a description of kind of how the success list can work. Um, we all have successes every single day. I guarantee it. Yeah. And you can start out small and you can add some big ones along the way, but the, I would say the small ones really stack up and they're just as important. Um, so what we're trying to do here is, you know, build you up enough and, and point out all the things that are working right. So you have the freedom to talk about those failures, which also has some really powerful uh, benefits to you as well. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, well, it, 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 that success list is for you to hack your brain, to remind yeah. you of all those things that are just like, yep, here it is. Like, oh, that's right. I, I, yep. I, I am a competent human being. I can do this stuff. One, you know, little or even one big failure isn't going to stop me. I, I know how to have success even, you know, and you can yeah. measure that any way you want and that'll get yeah, you. And you're comfortable with it, right? Yeah. You, you, that, that list gets you comfortable with, okay, I, I'm successful. Cause lo, all, I think many of us had a, have a hard time kind of patting ourselves on the back and recognizing that, that we've made, you know, this was a success and I did well here. Um, and we're all often, or I think we're all taught to, you know, recognize other people's success, but it's, it's maybe even more so right. uh, to recognize yourself, especially as a small business owner, because you're constantly uh, giving out attaboys and patting other people on the back, but there's not a lot, you know, when you sign the paycheck, uh, there's not a lot of people telling you you're doing a great job. You, you have to find those things that tell hey, you, you have that. to tell yourself. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. You got to tell yourself. And yeah. you know, you, it, it's, I think it's all about creating a, a, a mix, you know, success. It, you know, obviously helps you live, you pay the bills, create your business, build wealth over time. And along the way, you know, these failures should make you stronger, wiser, hopefully without derailing, you know, this, uh, your, your march towards, you know, inevitable world domination that we know you're on. And, uh, it's, it's just being able to put these things together and, uh, so that, you can succeed. So you can with succeed. Both. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, one of the things that I often see too, that I wanted to bring up and get your feedback to see if you've seen this as well, is I see business owners over and over always swinging for the fences to use a baseball analogy, you know, to, to seeking out home runs over and over and over. And I've, I have not done that. And, and, and maybe I missed out on lots of opportunities. Maybe, maybe, but maybe, but what I've done is focused on sticking with that baseball analogy, you know, the singles and the doubles that, uh, with an occasional home run when yeah. those oppor opportunities came along yeah. and, you know, by building out those day-to-day -day skills, uh, it's allowed me to react quickly when, you know, much larger opportunities were available or came well, along. Well, that's and, it. And the, I, the singles and the doubles create your cash flow. Yeah. Uh, in, it, it, for it, me, you know, and it's like, let's just get it, get the machine running. And then, like you said, yeah. when the opportunity comes along, now you're prepared, M more yeah, prepared. If, if yeah. you don't have that uh, day to day stuff going, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't have been able to take uh, 
advantage of those bigger opportunities. I wouldn't have had this the background skills, right? I wouldn't right. have been able to convert things really quickly. And and that's a really good point that you that you bring up the your cash flow and everything else. And and I've done that as well. I always have things that I do each day that generate revenue. I've talked about it on the show before, you know. And I always look at that, how much revenue have I generated today? And there's long-term projects that maybe you're going to do really well on, but you know, okay, I've got to pay the rent. I've got to pay the mortgages. I've got to meet payroll. Then I move up from there for larger opportunities. So you create this stable revenue stack that I know that even if I fail on some of these larger projects, it's not going to be wiped. I'm not going to be wiped out. Right. Right. I still have these other revenue streams coming in uh, that are good, that are stable and they keep things moving forward. And it gives you uh, or gives me, you know, the freedom to experiment and take more risk like that. Yeah. And I, I would encourage you to look at that. How are you stacking up the the revenue to make sure that, you know, the day to day stuff just works because you can't risk it. You can't risk not meeting payroll in two weeks because you took some big, you know, gamble that something was going to pay off. You've got to have all that stuff covered. I think so. I, I'm certainly more comfortable when I have that stuff covered. I mean, I, I know, you know, there's stories, I mean, especially of meeting payroll, there's the the famous story of how Fred Smith saved and created oh, FedEx. I just listened to that. Yeah. I just right. To that. He, you know, where he knew he was on his way back to Memphis. He knew they didn't have enough money uh, to make payroll and he was connecting through Chicago and he knew that what he was doing if he got on the plane to Memphis was to go back to shut down the business. And he's like, I don't want to do that. And so he looked on the board and he saw a flight to Vegas and he, uh, he took the flight to Vegas and he put it all, I believe he put it all on red. I'm sure whichever color he put it on is, is very important to the company. Uh, but he took all of the company's money and put it on red or, or black, but it was one of them. And, uh, and he won. And so he, you know, basically doubled his money. You don't quite double your money because that's not how sure. Vegas works. Uh, is yep. the house always wins, right? But, um, but you know, and then he used that to fuel the company, and off they went. And you know, I'm sure you, Fred Smith, will tell you because he's happy to to you know talk about himself or always was. And and he says, uh, like, I'm sure he'll tell you that that fueled future risks that he took like, okay, you know, you can take these big crazy risks and really get it done. And, and, you know, they proved that over the years. I mean, they're, you know, when they partnered with the postal service because FedEx realized that they had all these planes sitting around all day waiting for the evening sort so they could fly their overnight packages around the country. It was like, wait a minute, the postal service needs stuff transported. We could do that during the day. And now suddenly they leveraged all these planes and all these pilots that were, you know, sitting there and generated a whole lot more revenue for the company and for the pilots and yeah. for everybody else, you know? So, but I mean, they, you know, you need to be, you need to be willing to take some level of risk for your company. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and, you know, wage if you, if you, I would argue that if you build up this these different revenue streams and have this revenue stack, it it allows you to take more of that risk. You're you're just going to yes. get more comfortable with it because you know, oh, I'm not going to have to go to Vegas and uh, you know, right <laughs> on on red and do it. And yeah, and one of the most fascinating things uh, that stuck out. I listened to a podcast on a called Business Wars, and they were talking about FedEx and UPS. Oh, okay, yeah. And uh, the first day that they started the overnight service with FedEx at one plane and they were hoping to get, you know, maybe eight or 900 packages uh, as their first day. And when Fred called back in the next day, you know, Hey, you know how to go tonight? What do we, you know, work on, what do we do? Da, da, da. And they had six <sighs> packages, not 600, yeah, but six. And, you know, it, it just goes to show it, it's that age old thing. He, he, starting out, you just don't know how it's, how things are going to work out, but you know even those small little things, and you know he didn't say, oh well, we, it's not going to work. You know, six, we got to keep going, got to keep fine tuning it, and uh, you know I, I I come back to what I started in the beginning is that framing, how you frame the story, and I know that Fred Smith is way more comfortable telling that story about six packages now as a yes, you know multi me mega millionaire, whatever he's, he's whatever worth. he's worth. Yeah. Uh, and built, you know, this, this huge organization, this worldwide thing, uh, that, that, that's a, 
great part of being successful is that you can talk about how much you've screwed up. Yes. And I can't tell you how freeing that is. Um, and it, it, it works great. And like I said, it, it, people, you gain more followers. You know, we talk about building your personal brand. It endears you to people because all of us have failure in our life. And if all you hear is somebody talking about how great they've done and over and over, I've never had, you know, my success stacked on top of it. it, it it's not authentic. Right. 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 We pick it up, you know, our BS detectors like, well, you know, I, I don't know about that. So when you can slip those failure stories in there, they're, they're really powerful. I would encourage you to, to, uh, to look at that. So my key takeaway here, you know, is build that solid revenue stack, start small, don't overlook the, the free money on the table. If there's some way to, you know, generate revenue, build solid cash flow systems, then, to your point, Dave, take more risk, try new things, see what happens. And when you fail, take what you learned and then start on the next thing. Yeah, that's it. That's the way. That's, I think so. Yeah. It definitely works. Cool, it definitely man. definitely works. It definitely yeah. works. It, well, it has to. You just make it work. That's right. There's no alternative, right? Uh, that's, you're not going to go work. You're not going to go work for somebody. No. You're going to work for yourself. You're going to have that freedom. You're going to build your business. Uh, then you're going to go build another business. Maybe along the way, you're going to sell that business or more than one. Yep. Um, all of it is going to help build up wealth, in, not just monetarily, but everything that we learn with these small businesses. And uh, we're excited to have you aboard listening with us each week. Yeah, for sure. For sure. That's all I got this week, man. You got anything else? Yeah, you too. good? Yeah. All right. I, I would just ask if, if you get anything beneficial out of the show each week, we'd love to ask you to go up and leave us a review. Five stars would be great. If you got to leave four, tell us, um, you know, leave it on the Apple podcast. You can go to businessshow.co slash reviews and find some other links to where you can go leave reviews wherever you listen to. It really helps us out a lot. And we appreciate your support. Absolutely. Uh, you can uh, you send us a note to feedback at businessshow.co. We'd love to hear from you. It's um it's been too long since we've heard from you, and I know who you are. And of course, if you have never emailed us, well, you too. So there you go. Feedback at businessshow.co. Thanks to our sponsors, meetotis.com slash SBS and linode.com slash SBS. Make sure to check them out as well. And uh, I don't know. I mean, just keep living that charmed life. That's. We'll see you next week. Take care, everybody.